And a shocking acquittal. Despite a mountain of evidence, a jury sets an accused killer free. It tops our news at 6. Good evening. You know, with the defendant's DNA all over the crime scene, the prosecution thought this murder case would never be in doubt. Yeah, but now the man who's accused of killing 65-year-old George Height inside Height's Trenton home is going free. Let's get to Guy Gordon. He is live with a verdict that stunned uh, investigators and everybody in the courtroom, including Height's family. Guy? It really has, Carmen and Steve. You know, George Height was a beloved figure in this community. He umpired Little League games at that field and others for over 50 years. But he died a horrible death, bound at his hands and feet, his 94-year-old mother nearby. But it was what was binding him, the cables that had DNA evidence connecting Aaron Marshall to the crime scene. George Height and Aaron Marshall met at Greektown Casino a few days before the murder, their only meeting, according to the defendant. Cell phone records of the defendant showed that he had uh, multiple phone calls um, between his cell phone and the victims. Marshall said he'd never been downriver, but on the suspected day of the murder, his cell phone pinged cell towers in Woodhaven and Trenton. Marshall's DNA was on the cable binding the murder victim, something the defense never discredited kind of a slight suggestion that maybe there was some DNA transfer from a couple days prior to the victim's death. No defense witnesses were called and yet after just two and a half hours of deliberation yesterday the jury rendered a not guilty verdict. A complete shock. Uh, we, we, thought, we thought it was a slam dunk. I, you, you could have knocked me over with a feather. I was just shocked. She's a longtime friend who attended trial every day. Fearful, does not want us to use her name, but felt she had to comment on George's behalf. It's horrible. I feel like no justice has been done for George. Oh, that he's been victimized a second time. Correct. It's a real concern to know that this guy's back on the street. And I believe, I believe he's a murderer, and he's out walking the streets among us. Now, the prosecution never really got an indication that this conviction was in any kind of jeopardy. The jury at one point did ask what the penalty was for aiding and abetting, but that just made them think that maybe they'd get a conviction on a second-degree murder charge. That proved not to be the case. Live from Trenton, I'm Guy Gordon, Local 4. Back to you. Now, Guy, did prosecutors seek to interview the jury to find out what was behind their decision? You know, that was offered by the judge, but I think the prosecutor and the detective were so stunned they didn't ask yeah. for it. And I think in retrospect, they said they weren't sure that they would have learned that much anyway, and that they were so upset that it probably wouldn't have gone very well. All right. Understandable. Our uh, Guy Gordon reporting for us live.